Hello, third graders. You might be wondering who I am, but I finally got my glasses, so I'm excited. Now, here's our wit and wisdom, module two, lesson 18. It is our Ed puzzle because we love Ed puzzle, not other things. All right, here is our essential question. How do people learn about space? Remember, this is what we're asking ourselves the entire time we are in module two. Next is our focusing question. How did the astronauts of Apollo 11 learn about space? And then our content framing question, we wanna know, how does the Cronkite anchor's first moonwalk add to my understanding of the Apollo 11 mission? So this one you can do right now if you have gotten your folder from your school. It is a lesson 18 handout, it's the top one. If you haven't yet, it's okay. You can just do this in Seesaw until you pick up your folder. Like my Prospect students, you're not gonna be able to do this until I drop off your folders at Prospect and I haven't been able to do that yet. So you need definitely need to do it in Seesaw. Um, my Rockford kids, most of you have your folders. If you don't, that's okay. You can also do this in Seesaw. So it's your preference. So now that we have read Moonshot, what do you know about the Apollo 11 mission? You're gonna write down three facts. So you can go ahead and either open Seesaw and type those in or write them down on your handout. Uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. Now, what new information about the Apollo 11 mission does our video provide? So I'm gonna link that right underneath here and I want you to rewatch it one more time and see what you learn from watching that video. A lot of you already talked about that yesterday in your comments and they were really good. So just keep that uh, mindset. Now, what information did you learn from the CBS news footage? So you're gonna come up with two things you've learned from watching our video. And I think most of you uh, mentioned two things or more that you had learned about the moon landing. So uh, just include those now and we'll move on. All right, then we have, what is Walter Cronkite's point of view or way of thinking or feeling regarding the moon landing? You're thinking about this uh, while you watch the video, you've probably already rewatched it, so you're ready to answer this question. That is also on your handout. Here's what it, that looks like. How do Walt, Walter Cronkite's words and actions show what he feels or thinks about the moon? Find two details to support your answer. So tell me, uh, when it asks for Walter Cronkite's point of view about the moon landing, tell me how he was thinking or feeling. And we know at the very beginning of the video, he says something about his hands that tells you one way he's feeling. And then think about what he's doing at the end of the video when he finally sees the moon landing and how he feels then. That's all you need to do for these two. All right, another question on your handout. How did you feel while you watched the footage of the moon landing? And what is your point of view about the events? Um, this is again, what we answered in the uh, comments yesterday. When I watched the video, I got goosebumps when they finally landed on the moon. Um, so I was really, um, actually Brantley used this word yesterday and I'm gonna borrow it from him. I was in awe of the events I was watching. So that was a great word and so I had to borrow it. Now, there's another question for our handout. How does Cronkite, how does our video, <laughs> add to my understanding of the Apollo 11 mission? Well, before I was looking at just illustrations and then this video kind of gave me another perspective, gave me more information. So just kind of talk about how that new information helped you understand the Apollo 11 landing a little bit more. All right, now we're going to examine the morphology of the word conserve. And really, we're just gonna be studying this word. All right, at the moon, Colin stays in Columbia, high above, a single circling soul. Armstrong and Aldrin leave an eagle and take it low and lower. They have just enough time and just enough fuel. They have a plan, to, they have to plan a place to land, a chosen safe site among the craters. 
So in your own words, what dangers are the astronauts facing? You're going to put that on your handout. Looking at this uh, text, this is page from page 26. Tell me what dangers are the astronauts facing here? And then we're going to read this uh, passage. It says, Eagle, 90 seconds of d descent fuel left. Armstrong hears the warning. Now, all he has ever learned is, fo is focused on this. Nothing matters but this exact moment. Aldrin's nonstop voice calls out altitude numbers. 40 feet, 35, 30. Down the, down the move, down and down. Fast enough to conserve precious fuel. Slow enough to land somewhere safely, he hopes. What phrase from the, each of these texts help you understand, <laughs> which phrases from both of these helped you understand the immediate danger that the astronauts are in? So look back at this text and tell me what one, underline what helped you see what the danger was and two, what is the danger? What, why are they, why would they be in danger? Reread that and, and think about it. All right. And then there's one more question. We have what word helps clarify the meaning of the word conserve? And here we have a quote, fast enough to conserve precious fuel. So they needed to land fast enough to conserve precious fuel. What do you think that word conserve means? And what word helps you figure that out? Oh, I lied. There's more. Uh, why do the astronauts want to conserve fuel? Remember, they were going fast enough to conserve precious fuel. So how does the meaning of conserve deepen our understanding of the serious risk astronauts faced by running out of fuel? Now, last thing we're going to do, this is our exit ticket. On your handout, you are writing a compound sentence. On your handout, you are writing a compound sentence using the word conserve. Remember, a compound sentence is a subject who a sentence is about, a predicate, what they're doing, then a comma, and a fanboy. So a conjunction, and then another subject, so someone or something, and what they are doing, and then a period. You got this, friends. Bye.